Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I decided to do another paint with me video because the last one was fun and we got some good reception so thank you for that. But yeah, we're back in action. I have a new angle because I have a new setup over here and hopefully it'll be more consistent now because I know that I change location like all the time because I'm just getting a feel for, you know, the right space and the right time to be filming. Anyway. Today I decided to stay with the theme of cartoon character painting and I'm going to be painting Bimo from Adventure Time because Bimo's super cute. I actually have like the perfect sized canvas and it'll be like half of my little Bimo and I'll be like boo boo Bimo or whatever. I already primed and sketched a little shapes on there so that I um, knew exactly where to go. The mouth is gonna be just like a little smiley face just cause we're not advanced in this house and that is just how it's gonna be. So if you're interested, keep on watching. If not, I'll hopefully see you in the next video. So I already mixed together a nice teal. I might have to pick it up so hopefully you can still see it. Ooh, it might be a little dark. I hope everyone's been doing well. My last video was more towards the beginning of quarantine but now we're like really in the heart of it, aren't we? People keep saying, oh, states are opening. You know, things seem to be looking up. Things are improving like a little bit, but not so much where like we can start going out and stuff. At least I don't feel. I'm kind of adjusted to things now where I have like my routine down. I've been getting a lot of sun. You're sitting right now, you are sitting on a desk and I have a desk out here. So I have a workspace. So I don't have to like do everything in my room on my bed. Cause that's pretty much where I've been doing everything like editing and schoolwork and stuff. Oh. The semester's over, thank the Lord. Learning remotely is not for me. As much of a struggle as it is to like get up and like go to class, like that is a hassle and a half for me. It's so much better than being on the computer. Ugh. Not exactly sure how back to normal things are gonna be, but it's okay, we have all summer to wait and see. I'm so lucky to have found this canvas because it's literally the last one I have. And then I checked on Amazon and most of them are sold out because you know, people are home and getting new hobbies these days. So it was kind of a bummer, but then I was like, hey, I've been wanting to paint Bimo because the line work seemed my level of skill. So I wanted to try and it's perfect because it's Bimo size. We're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to do it. As I mentioned in my last video, we don't have to be good at our hobbies. It just has to be fun. taken a while. I feel like the color changed. Like this is definitely more blue than when I started. Whoopsie daisy. I thought that maybe I could tell some stories. I wanted to film a paint with me like this whole time, but I was like, what am I even gonna talk about? Like, I don't wanna keep talking about, oh my God, quarantine, what am I doing in quarantine? Because like, um, we get it, we're in quarantine. We all know we don't need to be reminded 24 seven, but like every source of media we consume, because I was thinking about the jobs I had because I've been through quite a few jobs. I am a job hopper. I really don't stay at one place for too long. Either because like I'm really stressed out or like it's annoying or just, there's, there's so many reasons not to stay somewhere. Some were definitely worse than others. Some were better than others and I didn't leave for any bad negative reason. My neighbor's talking really loudly outside. He's chirping like the birds. You can probably hear the birds chirping away. How the heck is this like changing colors? This is definitely changing colors. It is not just me. Um, my neighbor's dropping F-bombs like it's nobody's business. I feel that though. I think I'm finally getting it to be one color. <laughs> the screen is getting smaller and smaller every time. It's okay, I'll fix it somehow, some way, someday. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for now. Let it dry before I add anything else. While I wait for it to dry, I'm gonna tell a story. Story time about the time that I worked at Wendy's, which was without a doubt my worst working experience. I don't even know where to begin. There's so much to it, so humiliating, but I'm gonna talk about it. If anyone I worked with in the past somehow ever stumbles across this video, you have been forgiven. This is in the past, but you know, this is just my perspective of what happened. So please don't be upset. And plus nobody's gonna know it was you anyway. I was 17, I was a senior in high school and my mom actually, um, I was away sleeping out of college to get like a feel for like the college life cause they had this little program. They were like, come stay overnight. And I was like, okay, so I went. And while I was there, I got a call. 
I remember getting a call while I was in one of the meetings and I was like, I gotta silence this call. Who the heck is calling me? Later on in the day, I checked my voicemail and it's Wendy's. And I was like, I don't remember applying to Wendy's, but I applied to so many jobs before. I was like, maybe I did apply online and I just didn't remember. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll call them back when I get a chance because that weekend was super busy at the school. So once I got home the next day, I um, called back the number and I was like, yeah, sure. Like, let's set up an interview. Sounds great. And I was so happy because I was like, okay, finally, like a real job. Like this is something that I'll be able to have even throughout college and in the summer and then for breaks when I come back home from school because I was planning on going to school out of state. And I found out that my mom actually was there at the Wendy's location and they said that they were hiring. So she took one of the little papers and filled out my information for me. And thanks mom um, for getting me that job. It was a blessing and a curse, mostly a curse, but we will get into that. So... I started, you know, I didn't know anything about anything and they were showing me the ropes and I was catching on pretty quickly to little things here and there, but I still struggled obviously because I'm new and I don't really know what's going on. Maybe three weeks go by and I'm still not really doing too hot. I still don't know what some of the the things mean on the cash register because I was put, you know when you go inside and order? That was me, like I was taking the orders. And I had to deal with a lot of grumpy people. Like people are miserable and they will make your life more miserable for no reason. Like I'm literally just here to take your order and get you your food. Like there's no need to give me an attitude. And there were a few times where like I tried so hard not to cry because um, customers were so like brutal. But I'm also a very sensitive person. So um, if someone raises their voice at me slightly, I'm just like, um, okay and I'll start crying. It didn't help that, you know, I was the only one at the counter and only my cash register was open. I think we had a second one, but mine was the only one open. Everyone else was, you know, making sandwiches, preparing food for the drive-thru, taking orders in the drive-thru, whatever. There were like five managers for some reason. I don't know why there wasn't one designated person. And since my schedule wasn't consistent, there was always someone new as the manager that day. So some I got along with better than others. Um, some of them, were better at biting their tongue than others. This one manager in particular did not like me and I think it was because I just didn't really know what was going on. Like I didn't know it like the back of my hand because I had just started a few weeks ago. And she made that very clear by um, yelling at me any chance she got. Like I feel like she just yelled at me for fun. Like maybe it was fun for her, I don't know. Um, if that's her thing, like that's her thing, I guess. But um, she would find every opportunity to yell at me. And there was this one time where uh, someone someone in the store ordered fries. So I was like, okay, let me go get the fries for them. I went to go get the fries, but I guess someone at the drive-thru ordered fries too. And that manager was like getting it for them. So I was waiting my turn behind her and she turns around and she yells at me. She's like, you don't have to hover over me. Like, oh my God, like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't like, I was like, okay, I, if I'm doing anything wrong, like I'm the type of person who's like, okay, I'm going to follow like what I have to do. And if I'm doing anything wrong, I feel so bad. So the fact that she like yelled at me because I was doing something wrong or I was like too close to her, whatever. I was like, okay, I'm so sorry. Like I felt so bad and so embarrassed because everyone heard it because everyone was around when she yelled at me. So then later in the day, like my other coworkers were still talking about how I got yelled at and they were like laughing about it and they thought I couldn't hear them because I was off washing trays and I heard them laughing about it. I knew that they were laughing about it because they were quoting what she said to me. I guess it was hilarious to them. And they were talking about how like, they were gonna talk about it in the group chat to like a manager who wasn't there. And I, I started crying, like tears were falling as I was washing the trays off. Cause they, they were talking about me and making fun of the fact that like, I got in trouble, like I was nervous, but I dried my tears. And at the end of the day, I just put on, you know, my brave face and I was like, okay, see you guys tomorrow, whatever. And then I was really upset. And you know, I called my boyfriend at the time and I was like crying to him. I was like, today was such a bad day. But the thing is like, I would get off work at like midnight or like towards midnight. And I would usually go to bed in high school around 10.30. So I was like already past my bedtime, already upset, like exhausted. I would have to get up at 5.30 in the morning the next morning. And as the weeks progressed, like I just kept getting yelled at and humiliated and I felt really small and I felt really sad and also overworked just because, you know, I was going to school all day long and then right after school, I would have to get ready to go to work and then the work environment wasn't very pleasant so it was getting more and more miserable and it came to one night where something happened i can't exactly remember but i couldn't hold back my tears and i was crying i was just so done so drained and 
they were just being mean to me so I was upset and I started crying I couldn't help it like I tried so hard to hold it in you have no idea um I just couldn't because that's just the kind of person I am I'm very emotional so then one of the managers that was pretty close to the manager who always yelled at me she was acting like she cared all of a sudden she's like are you okay like oh. It annoyed me so bad. I was like, I know you don't care. You're just, you know, you're trying to do your manager job. So I was like very quiet and like barely said two words. And she was like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And like, I left very just upset and distraught and embarrassed because I didn't want to cry, but I cried. So then I ended up um, putting in my two week notice, but they were like, you could just go because they didn't want me to be there. So I was like, okay. My last shift was Mother's Day, I remember, because there was like not a lot of people there. And after that, I was like, oh, I'm so done with this place. And it was just really sad being a teenager and like these grown adults because like, they were all like in their late 20s and up. I'm sure they forgot about me by now, but I, that's a part of my experience now. And like, it just makes me sad. But I, I know the world is brutal. So it kind of prepared me for that, I guess. Um, so thanks, I, I think. I remember there was this one time where they had me, I was, I'm short, okay? I'm not, I'm pretty much average height, like 5'4". They gave me the bag of like the frosty juice or whatever. Like it comes in, it, it's like, it looks like chocolate milk. So they were like, okay, go put this in the frosty machine. Here's my height. Here's the frosty machine's height. So I had this big bag and I had to go on my tip, tip toes and I still couldn't really reach. And I attempted to pour it in, but then it ended up going everywhere i was so embarrassed i knew i did wrong and of course they complained about it but like i get why they complained about the same time I'm like why are you making me do it like i'm so short and then i have to worry about the register it was just a lot and i couldn't handle it i truly know that part of it was them being annoyed because i didn't know what i was doing but also like i really am not cut out for that kind of work so i i do respect the people who do this work and can handle it because i cannot handle it and that is my experience so hopefully you enjoyed hearing about my embarrassment. Back to BMO. I'm going to do the outlines. Maybe I should do the inside of BMO first. I am all over the place. I am scrambled like an egg. Let me try. Hmm, that works, yeah, that works. I got way too excited over that. Oh no. How did that happen? That's not cool. That is sick. Oh, you're lucky I can cover it up. Okay, this is definitely super lopsided, but we're not striving for, I can't even say it right, striving for perfection. I'm just gonna do thick lines because this is like the best brush for lines in my experience of painting that one time with it. Let me try to do it like this. I'm sorry if you can't see, but the stakes are high. Oh, oh, can you see? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's really hard to angle. Like this setup is not ideal, but it's the best I can do. It's crooked. Every time I do a painting, it comes out crooked, I notice. Like, I literally don't mean to, but it just happens. But I think that's all right, yeah? Yeah, I think that looks cute. Okay, we did that line work. So I'm actually going to take a pencil and do some light sketches just so I can be a little more precise. I got black on it. The culprit in question. I got black on it, but it will be fixed. Another job I had was as a camp counselor, which is a nightmare for me because I'm not assertive. I think that's what I found out in my experience working. And um, yelling, I can't yell. My voice doesn't travel. The louder I am, like the quieter my voice is somehow. Don't know. Don't know why. That's just how I was programmed at birth. But kids are rowdy. Kids are crazy. We knew that though. You just never realize it until you're in there and you're like, what am I doing here? It was good money though, really good money. I got a lot of makeup that summer that I never touched after that. But at the time I was living, but is it worth it? I don't know, it, it was good It was good to have the experience, but I wouldn't do it again and I didn't do it again. They even asked me, hey, like you wanna do this this year too? I was like, no, <laughs> which is good because I ended up having a really bad summer. Things just happen like that and find good in the bad, which was me not having to work there ever again. I'm gonna do the face, there's one eye. Oh God, messed that one up real nice. That's good, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do the smile now. Oh, I'm nervous for this one. From far away, it looks nice. In the camera. I'm gonna have to trace a bunch of this, but I'm actually gonna do it off camera because I know it's gonna take forever, so be back soon. 
Okay, this is what I have so far. I have to fix this circle. I don't know what happened here, but I have to do the big circle now. I was super proud of this circle. Look at that. I didn't know I was that much of an artist. My hand shakes so much. How the heck do you stop that? Like, what is going on in there, nerves? Like, help. Sort yourself out. That is so uneven. So far, this is my BMO. I just have to color in. I put, I wanna put BMO on the side too, cause that's just, you can't not do that. I have all these extra colors for the buttons. So I painted the sides, they're dry now. Painted the sides so I could put BMO on it. I would totally drink milk that looked like this, blue milk, imagine. That's too orange. <laughs> Yikes, color theory. Color theory is crying right now, oh my God. Yellow is so weak. It literally got overthrown by the other colors. Let's give it a shot, I guess. It still looks weird. All of that effort for what? Nothing. <gasps> oh, fuck. I got yellow on the side of it. Uh, get away. Go. Banished. You're banished. I also worked at a Halloween store. I totally forgot about this because it was only like a month or so that I worked there. Whenever I tell people that, they're like, oh my God, that's fitting. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's because I look like a scary mask. And then I wear stuff like this and I'm like, oh right, that's just me. Ah, did you see that disaster? But yeah, I worked there. It was actually pretty pleasant. Mostly because I avoided customers all the time. I literally hid away in the aisles and hoped nobody came up to me. And like, I would not go up to people and be like, can I be fine anything? Cause I know how annoying that is. Like, I don't want people to do that to me when I'm at the store. So I was like, let me be respectful of these people's space. And if they want help, they'll come get help, you know? So I only let them approach me. And it happened a lot. Like they need, if they need help, they'll come get it. You know, like, I don't want to be all in their face. Like that's so uncomfortable. I would hide away from the entrances. Cause like, if someone comes in, you're supposed to be like, welcome to Spirit Halloween. I was like, I'm not about to do that. So I hid away and I didn't do that. <laughs> I got my paycheck at the end of the day and that was that. But it sucked because we worked so long and got like no break. Or if we got a break, it was super short. And like, I didn't have food with me. I didn't pack a bag to lunch. Like I was in college, like, what do you want? And it was also weird because they never put me on register, which I was fine with because my math skills suck. Like I have a lot of pressure and I have bad experience with cash registering. Being a cash register, good word. I don't know how you've done it all these years, but it was fun. Honestly, I would do it again. Wow, this red. Every time I use this red, I'm like impressed. Like I forget how rich it is. It's beautiful. Crimson, I think. Yeah, crimson red. Crimson is quite the color. <gasps> My battery's about to die. I have to say, I mix these colors very well. I don't have blue. I mixed blue and like, I don't have purple. Like I mixed this together to make this. Hello, BMO. I just have to write the name on the side and I'm done. So this is my BMO. Let me know what you think. If you paint, let me know. Like I, I would love to see some more art. Leave suggestions for topics to talk about cause I really never know what to talk about during these videos but I love doing them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned for more. I will be filming and uploading more now that I'm back. And um, hope you're all well. Thank you so much for watching.